mollusks. And so this is a new group. It's a group we're not going to actually spend a lot of time on, even though there are several of them, because we actually need to get to the largest group of um, invertebrates, which are arthropods. So in this group, it's a really varied group. It ranges from a snail, and there are several different types of snails to clams, to your advanced mollusks like a squid or an octopus. Uh, so when you see the pictures here, I have several shells, um, and then we also have the octopus um, suction cup. So uh, we'll be learning about the characteristics of these guys today. So remember, when we're talking about characteristics, these are things that need to be true for you to be considered a mollusk. So one of the very first things, and these are general characteristics about the group, uh, but this is one of the largest animal groups. And not just largest invertebrates, but largest groups in general. So arthropods is largest, and mollusks is second largest. In this group, we have about 75,000 members. Remember, that's an estimate. But again, that should give you a good idea of size because a lot of the groups we've looked at so far have had like maybe 10, 12,000. So 70,000 members is a pretty big group. In this group, we have some very, very simple animals. And then it, we have a large range to some of the animals that are the most complex. So you've got a snail or a clam. A clam filter feeds and has a really primitive version of an eye. Some don't even have a version of an eye. Comparing that to a squid or an octopus, um, which are highly advanced, so much so that uh, an octopus can even actually use tools. We've got a pretty big range in this group, um, and it'll probably be helpful to kind of look at cephalopods almost on their own, even though they're mollusks. Um, in this group, we have chitons, like I said earlier, clams, um, a squid, chambered nautilus, uh, several different types of organisms. Okay, the general characteristics, again, um, they all have a foot for movement. Now, the foot can be modified in different ways. In the squid, it's built into arms and tentacles. Uh, on a snail, they really just move along their foot. So that is a definite thing that you need to have to be characterized as a mollusk. They also have a mantle that secretes their shell. So when you're looking at a mollusk, the mantle is typically this thin portion inside that makes their shell. Um, kind of an interesting side note, uh, when we have a pearl, that is because something got stuck in that mantle. And then essentially they're secreting the shell around it. So the mantle is the part of their body that makes their shell, and they make it from, um, from minerals in the ocean water. So like I said, guys, to be a mollusk, most of them have to have a shell. Now you can probably think of some that don't. So for example, a slug does not have a shell. Um, an octopus only has a remnant of a shell. But this in general is what most of the groups have, and it's also made of calcium carbonate. Um, there's different layers of it. So when you're seeing a pearl, you're actually only seeing a certain layer of the shell when a pearl is made. Uh, and then you can see here we have two shells pictured. So the one on top is a type of gastropod, and the one on the bottom is the inside of a shell of some type of a nautilus. Okay, moving on to more characteristics. Uh, they also, in general, have two parts in their bodies. So those two parts are the head foot. So if you look at the squid, the head foot is uh, the actual eye, and then the tentacles, and that part of the body is the head foot. So this includes their feeding organs, sensory like an eye, and motion because it has the head and the foot. So what's interesting is that a lot of times those are combined. If you didn't think that was kind of weird when you dissected your squid, you might think about that now, how the squid's head is actually directly attached to the part of its body it uses to move. The other part of their body is the visceral mass. This is the part inside that contains the majority of their organs. So if you guys look at the picture, the visceral mass is the part on top, and that contains digestive, circulatory, respiratory organs, etc. So again, two basic parts of their body, the head, foot, and the visceral mass. Um, remember we talked about the mantle earlier. That's the part that secretes their shell. It also holds gills or a lung for breathing. So in general, most of them have gills, but some of them have a primitive version of a lung to breathe. These animals do have a trusium, 
which if you remember, that means they have an actual body cavity, space inside their body that houses their organs. And finally, most of them have radula for feeding. The ones that don't are filter feeders. But if you look, that's the picture that I chose to put on this slide. That is a radula. So um, the radula is this little sharp tooth-like structure here. This is a microscopic view, but it's kind of like a tongue, and there's sharp teeth embedded on it. And they can use that to scrape, to shred, but no matter what organism, it's still this tongue-like structure that has tiny, rasping teeth. Okay, and then finally, just a few general characteristics about the whole group. Most of them have an open circulatory system, and that's going to be different from what most of you guys know. I mean, you have a closed circulatory system, and that means everything's enclosed in blood vessels or uh, veins or capillaries. If it's open, that means the blood actually goes into some open space. And the only ones that don't are the ones we dissected, like the squid. So all of them do except that one group. Okay, so what that means, if you look at this picture, is they do have a pumping heart, which you can see here, and the heart does pump. They have blood vessels, they have veins, and then they have these open cavities called sinuses where the blood gathers. So if you look here, we have like a sinus here, um, a sinus here. So they have these open spaces that are still connected, but it's just this big open area where the blood gathers. And it's kind of the precursor to a true closed circulatory system. So those are our general characteristics that make a mollusk a mollusk.